What's up, Ego Hackers? Welcome to the C.S. Joseph Podcast. I'm your host, C.S. Joseph. Today's Acolyte question, we're going to be discussing learning styles. And I'm actually really excited uh, for this question. And today's question is, what is the learning style, the primary learning style of the ENTP archetype? Great. A question I get to talk about myself in, finally. It's been a while since we've had an ENTP question, which is cool. and. Uh, and I also noticed that uh, we have an ISTJ question uh, coming up around the corner very soon, getting some more of the sensors in there. Need more ESFJ questions, folks. Need more ESTJ questions. Uh, just more SJ questions would be nice. And also some more SP questions. Need more sensing-based uh, questions. But yeah, like uh, if you guys want to get questions relating to your type, become an Acolyte member and... Uh, you know, combined with the journeyman uh, membership, it's only 100 bucks a month, and uh, you get uh, one question a month where you get to ask uh, the team, where myself or Chris Taylor will be answering it here on the podcast or on the YouTube channel. Uh, basically, any question you want, within reason. Sometimes we reject questions and have you uh, change your question, but for the most part, we try to get every one of them in that we can. Uh, so yeah, check that out, csjoseph.life forward slash members to become journeyman, then upgrade to Acolyte from there, or csjoseph.life forward slash portal if you already are a journeyman, and you can upgrade to Acolyte uh, from there as well. So anyway, uh, yeah, it's uh, awesome, learning styles. You know, I always, I always get confused on learning styles because there's so many differences, and I will admit just like up front, I am not an expert at learning styles at all. I'm, I'm really just an expert at Jungian analytical psychology and Forsyth's dynamics, uh, as well as Octogram. But uh, I really just, it's not really my strong suit. Uh, honestly, <laughs> Chris Taylor is uh, definitely more effective at uh, answering learning style questions than I am uh, because he's got a lot more experience with it. And he's always told me about how ENFPs, for example, are always visual learners and they, ha they require visual aids in order for them to really take in information. And that visual aid assists expert thinking child uh, to be able to you know make the connections because they have introverted thinking trickster which makes it very difficult for them to filter information and actually put the information in a proper order whereas if you have a visual aid for example the ENFP is able to actually see the connections between the information very easily and it makes it a lot easier for their expert thinking child to absorb them however when it comes to ENTP, ENTPs are a little bit more, in, we're like, uh, the level of interesting <laughs> that we have is, uh, well, it's very interesting because we have introverted thinking parent, but we also have extroverted thinking critic. So we're able to interface with the entire spectrum of thinking, thinking judgment, basically, because it's uh, two pessimistic functions. It is our parent function and our critic. And when you have, uh, when you have a introverted decision make or an, an introverted or an extroverted decision making function, that basically gives you mastery over thinking versus feeling. Like for example, INFJs are masters over feeling in terms of morals and ethics and that perspective because they have uh, F functions in their parent and their uh, critic slot, right? Just like I have T functions in my parent and critic slot. Same thing goes uh, with the ENFP for their uh, introverted feeling parent and extroverted feeling critic. However, where the ENFP struggles is, you know, the fact that their T functions, it's child and trickster, so then it makes it very difficult, especially from a learning perspective. Learning is often done, uh, well, at least the information that comes from learning, basically. Uh, you know, you perceive information with your uh, perception functions, but to actually really learn and, and filter or categorize that information properly, you have to rely on your T functions, which is extroverted thinking and introverted thinking, in order to actually pull that off, right? So, how does an ENTP go about doing it? Well, ENTPs, we're a little bit different. I, I've, there's a certain phenomenon when it comes to learning and how we take in information, because I have heard from multiple people, including my uh, INFJ mentor, Robert Morial, uh, he, he made it very clear uh, to me that like one day we were in a, 
we were in like a Whole Foods one day actually, and uh, going down the aisle, and I I read like everything super quick. Like I take in all of the information in front of me super quick. I read so fast that I could read every single product that's in the aisle. And then my logic, my, my introverted thinking parent is like, okay, is this what we're looking for or not? Is this or not? Is this it or not? Is this it or not? And just going through that process on every single item on the shelf. And I do it within a few seconds. It is done. And I'm like, nope, it's not here. Move on. Or, oh, there it is. And then I hand it to him. And he's like, wow, no one takes in information faster than you do, Chase. And the thing is, is that no one takes in information faster than ENTPs. I mean, we're starter types. We're all about, you know, speed and whatnot. Plus, we have that mastery of thinking because our T functions are both in the uh, parent and the critic slot simultaneously. Similar to INTJs, the thing is, is that INTJs, because they have introvert intuition hero, it's like a sniper rifle. So their their range of vision is extremely small. It's like uh, looking through a periscope or a uh, like a scope, like a sniper scope on a sniper rifle looking at each individual thing and it takes them a while to get through it even though they are you know triple progression triple movement and they're very quick as a result the thing is though is that it's still difficult for them but for me expert intuition hero basically it's like a shotgun and you know it's a shotgun going out but it's a shotgun coming in and i could just take in all that information all at once and then instantly filter it with introverted thinking parent it makes it a lot easier so ENTPs being able to take in information so quickly is an amazing skill. But because of expert intuition hero, we're also able to parse out our brains to multitask and taking in information while also simultaneously doing a task in some other capacity at the same time, which is also pretty amazing that we're even able to actually do that, right? So one of the things that we're able to do you know, because of that, uh, and, uh, you know, Fib on the uh, Discord server, uh, he is also a living proof of this, because I told him one day, it's like, hey, why don't you just get, like, one of your Apple AirPods or a wireless, uh, you, know, uh, you know, earbud and stick it in your ear while you're doing your job and listen to audiobooks while you're doing the menial tasks of your job. And he did. And he read books rapidly. This is actually how I read so many books. Like my record of the amount of books that I read in like one year was 22 books in a year. Uh, I'm trying to get up to uh, 26 books a year, which is one book every two weeks, basically. But you know, basically, when I'm working or doing menial tasks, I'm always listening to an audiobook, and that's in my opinion, the main learning style of an ENTP is auditory. We just can take in information auditorily very easily. And, and then we're able to even go even further as we're listening to information and taking in concepts. We're also able to like perform menial tasks at the same time, which allows us to you know, save so much time. It means that we can have this really lousy, dead-end, minimum wage job, for example, or any job for that matter that could be potentially boring, but we're still being consistently stimulated by taking in new information and learning simultaneously. And it keeps our brain awake because otherwise our brain would just be like, oh, this is so boring, this is so dull. We're able, actually able to like, take care of our brains in that particular moment because it's like, hey, I'm able to distract myself with taking in all this additional information, like that shotgun approach of taking it all in. And that's what we end up doing. And it's, it's amazing. You know, so auditory, it's, it's great to be able to learn it. But here's the other thing is that sometimes though, it's not enough for us to take in information or concepts, you know, from an auditory perspective. Sometimes when it comes to actually learning physical tasks instead of conceptual things, conceptual things like from a book, physical tasks, it's really just not enough for someone to show us how to do it. You know, we're not really necessarily visual learners that way. We have to experiment and do the thing ourselves. So we have someone, so we have to have someone to mimic. So we end up mimicking them. So yeah, auditory may be our primary learning style, but we also have to do the action or do the skill ourselves and then repeat it. And we learn through repetition of us doing it. So we have to experiment with it, which is also potentially, you know, um, you know, we end up <laughs> failing a lot. You know, it's kind of like, you know, Tesla saying, oh yeah, I discovered a, or is it Edison? No, I don't think it's Edison. Edison's a crook anyway. Uh, 
I think it was Tesla that said, and I could be wrong. Someone put it in the comments and correct me, please. Uh, but, you know, oh, I see you failed a lot there. And it's like, oh, no, I just discovered uh, 1,000 different ways uh, to, uh, to not do it, to do this task wrong, because you only need to figure out how to do it right once, basically. And that's what ENTP is all about. We have to consistently experiment over and over and over with things until we get to a point where we're, we're comfortable with doing the skill, comfortable with the repetition, comfortable with doing mimicry, mimicking what we saw someone else do, but we have to do it ourselves until it becomes second nature for ourselves, basically. So auditory first, but then we have to learn through mimicry and repetition. We have to prove our learning, basically, through mimicry and uh, repetition. We have to do it ourselves. So we take in the information you know, from an auditory perspective, and that's our preferred learning style. It's so funny because like, oftentimes you know, we'll even produce visual aids to help people understand us, but when people are presenting us visual aids, we barely pay attention to those visual aids, much to their chagrin. It really bothers them sometimes, and usually we're just listening and like, trying to get all the information you know, from an auditory perspective, but then, you know, still we have to prove that we learned it and we do that through mimicking someone else or mimicking or trying it out for ourselves trying out the ideas for ourselves now robert potts who's in the community uh he uh he's a madman on the discord server and if you want to get on a discord server that's discord.gg forward slash ego hackers you might want to go check that out please join the discord server it's hyperactive we have, uh, we're coming up on 1,600 active users on the Discord server. It's very well moderated, not very much trolling or abuse that, we, that you would typically see on a Discord server. But the point is, is that, you know, you can talk to all these people that I'm talking about and just message them and be like, hey, CSJ mentioned you on the podcast, you know, who are you? What are you all about? You can, you can have conversations with them and they can also confirm the things that I'm saying about them as well. Uh, but the point is, is that you got to get to a point where, you know, as an ENTP, you are, you are learning auditorily, but you have to, uh, with your auditory learning, but you have to prove it. You have to mimic it. You have to, it's, you know, sure you can be shown something, but if you don't do it yourself and prove to, like, say an ISTP is showing you how to do something, if you don't do it yourself and then keep trying and keep repeating and keep trying to mimic them, you're not really going to gain the skill. But as I said, Robert Potts calls it being the method actor of process. ENTPs take the specific skill or the lesson and they wear it as a second skin and they try it out. They try good things, they try bad things, they try evil things. We try everything because we're pragmatic like that. We're very independent and we're going to keep trying. And then eventually, as it becomes our second skin and we are this thing, you know, uh, then we'll cut away, we'll parse the things that we don't want anymore or that are useless to us, basically. And it basically becomes a part of ourselves. But we couldn't get there without initially having that auditory learning. So, and that is the answer. So anyway, folks, thanks for watching and listening, and I'll see you guys on the next episode.